Let's look at our additional practice, inventing logarithms. We're going to write each of the following as a single log logarithm, rewrite all radicals as powers, and simplify completely, express powers as factors as possible. And uh, the first thing that I notice is that we've got log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of 8, log base 2 of 2 minus log base 2 of 8. And we can start this problem by taking log base 2 of 4 times 2. That's what happens when we see the addition minus the log base 2 of 8. Well, what do we do when we see subtraction? What we do with subtraction is we're going to take log base 2 of 4 times 2, and we're going to divide that by 8. So I actually really want to get my parentheses here around the entire function, 4 times 2 times 8. So we can simplify that a little bit more. We end up with log base 2 of 8 divided by 8. And in fact, we can even simplify one more time, and this gives us log base 2 of 1. Well, the thing is, we can figure out what the log base 2 of 1 equals. I tend to set it equal to P. If you have Mr. Graham, he tends to set this equal to E. So when we look at this problem, we can convert it to an exponential, and it's 2 to the P equals 1. And we, when we figure out what power we set 2 to to get 1, we find out that we get 0, which is the answer to our first condensing logarithm problem. Problem number two happens to have also a subtraction and addition in the problem. I'll start off with the first two. Subtraction is going to cause us to divide. It's going to be log base 4 of 16 divided by 4 plus log base 4 of x. Remember our goal, we're trying to condense. We're trying to write this so that we only have one logarithm in the problem. And I didn't do it on the last problem, but we could do it on this problem and the last problem for that matter. We can figure out that 60 divided by 4 is 15. And then over here we have log base 4 of x. As we take a look at the fact that there's an addition in between these two, Addition equates to the multiplication, and we end up with log base 4 of 15x. Number 3. A little bit different on this problem. The first thing that I notice is that there's a coefficient on log of x, a 5. In other words, there's a number in front of the logarithm on each term, in fact, in this problem, in this particular problem. And when we have something in front of the logarithm, what we're going to do is we're going to raise it to the power. So before I look even at that second term, this is going to become log base x to the fifth. And we still have our plus 3 log of x squared. Well, the same thing's going to happen on um, this particular problem. We're going to have to take this 3. And we're going to have to raise that to the top. So we already simplified log of x to the fifth. And now this is going to become log of x squared cubed. Well, let's work with our exponent rules. And our exponents say that when we have x squared cubed, I like the superpower. In other words, what that means is we're going to multiply those two exponents together, and we get log of x to the fifth plus log of x to the sixth. Remember, we multiplied two times three to get six. And now we can actually apply the next logarithmic property, which is that we see um, this plus in the problem, and that's the product property of logarithms. And that means that we can rewrite this as log of x to the fifth times x to the sixth. And then we have to go back to our exponent rules, which then tell us that when we multiply two values together that are like bases, we 
add the exponent, so this is going to be x to the 5 plus 6, which is log of x to the 11. And some people can do some of these steps, combine some of these steps. But the last part here, I'm going back to the direction, says express powers as factors if possible. Well, we have power in here. We've got x to the 11. So to finish this problem, what we need to do is we need to take that 11, and we need to rewrite it out in front of the logarithm, and we get 11 log of x. Problem number four, we have the same kind of idea here. We've got a fraction in front of both logarithms in this case, and it doesn't have to be a fraction, but it is in this particular problem. So when we simplify, this is going to be log of 3x to the 1 third. And this is going to be log of 3x to the 2 thirds. we did is we took this one-third and we wrote it as an exponent. We took this two-thirds and we wrote it as an exponent, which is our power property of logarithms. Um, but when I take a look at this, I can make it a little bit simpler, but I think I'll go along and then I'll show you one other way to do this problem. Um, but we can rewrite this problem. And actually, now that I think about it, I don't think I'm going to do that. I think that I um, want to erase and start over, and I'm really sorry. And I didn't do anything wrong. I just can make this problem simpler. If we take a little bit closer look, we have log of 3x as the first term. We have log of 3x as the second term. And those are called like terms, since they're both log of 3x. So what we really can do is we can take one third plus two thirds. Remember when we add, we have to have a common denominator, but we do. One third plus two thirds equals three thirds plus one. So ultimately what we have here is we have one log of three x, and we don't really need to write the one. We just need to write log of three x. Again, there's other ways to do this problem, but I think that that is the simplest way for me to solve that problem. Problem number five. We've got parentheses in here. All subtraction in this. And I'm going to start with the parentheses. Log of 3 minus log of 4. Well, log of 3 minus log of 4 is equivalent to log of 3 divided by 4. And that is the quotient property of logarithms. And then we still have log of 2. Well, it's subtracted, so we're going to use the quotient property of logarithms again and combine this, and this is log of 3 fourths divided by 2. And then you can pull out your calculator if you need to and type in alpha y equals 3 fourths divided by 2. And what we get is we get 3 eighths. And that's going to allow us to finish this problem. Log of 3 eighths. Problem number 6 log base 3 of 2x minus 5 log base 3 of y. We can't do anything on this first part of the problem at the moment. This is log base 3 of 2x. But what I am going to deal with is this 5. We're going to make that 5 an exponent on the y using our power property of logarithms. So this is going to be minus log base 3 of y to the fifth. Well, minus. That goes back to our quotient property of logarithms. Minus then means that we're going to divide. We're going to divide the 2x divided by y to the fifth. And again, we have condensed this logarithm 
this logarithmic problem down into one logarithm, which is ultimately the goal. Write these terms with only one logarithm.